Hi everyone, how are we all? I hope you're all well. Welcome back to another video. Um, apologies, I feel like there's loads of lighting, Blah, shadows, but, but, but today it's in out, it's in out. The sun can't make its mind up, so we're going with this, but hopefully you still get a very like true to life representation of the products I'm gonna be using, um, which are all from like the clean conscious beauty space. I will get to that term in a bit, but just to explain the video, um, I've been buying some things that fit into that category recently. So you're gonna see a haul. Um, I've been using them loads so I can give you a full on review. And then also I'm gonna put them on my face at the same time. So I don't wanna say you're getting a tutorial because yeah, you're just getting me putting on glowy makeup with a bronze I like always. <laughs> but you're getting a bit of a three in one here, but just have a quick chat around the term clean. Um, I'm lucky enough to count Caroline Hirons as a dear friend. Not only is she a friend, she is like my ultimate spiritual advisor when it comes to all things skincare, makeup, and basically life. Um, I will link one of her videos down below for you, but she talks about this across all of her platforms. She's spoken about this many, many times before, but I think this video like articulates it better in a way than I ever could. There you go, that was terrible grammar. But basically how the descriptor of clean makes everything sound like it's dirty and that's perhaps not the way to approach things. Um, so I'm gonna be terming it more like green, conscious. Um, that's more how I view these products and I will quickly talk you through the criteria and like how I pick these products. Number one, they were all available on, I think it's called Natch, Naturissimo. I'm not sure how you say that word. And also Content Wellbeing, um, which is a brilliant independent shop in London. They're available online. I think they ship worldwide. Those are the two places that I purchased all of these things from. I'll link them down below for you. And I have checked online. All of these products are from brands that are cruelty free. I will put my source down below for you. The only one that isn't mentioned on that list is this brand, which is Manasi 7 and they say on their website that none of their products feature ingredients tested on animals. Um, so that's fab. I'm checking my notes here, but most are packaged in a sustainable way using recycled materials or materials that can be recycled and reused. There are some brand exceptions here, but for the most part, they're sustainably packaged where possible. And also most are free from gluten, parabens, flaflates, I never know how to say that, sulfates, synthetic fragrances, and a lot of these brands also feature vegan products. Um, so although the whole brand might not be vegan, some of their products are vegan. It tends to be beeswax that is the thing in products that makes them not vegan. So there you go. If those are the things that you're interested in, just as like an overall brand point of view, the majority of these brands and products fit those criteria. I think for me, there are like four things I'm very interested in, in this space. Number one, cruelty free. Like that's just great. Like you can't argue with that. Number two, sustainable packaging. I'm obviously a huge beauty consumer. And so recycling something coming in a cardboard box instead of a plastic box is something that I'm like constantly thinking about how can I reduce that? So I think that's definitely a thing that I'm looking into more and more. Also to try new brands that I haven't tried before. Um, there's maybe two, three, three of these brands I've tried before, but the other ones I haven't tried anything from their lineup at all. So I think that's really cool. I've been a beauty lover now for about 15 years. And so like trying new things is really fun. And also just like supporting smaller brands, independent brands and the retailers as well that carry them. So those are kind of the four things that I'm really focused on here. Um, but yeah, just throughout the video, personally, I feel like these are more conscious purchases rather than clean. But there you go, that out the way. Let's put some makeup on the face. Um, I'm very excited about this actually. I've been sort of testing these things out as a whole face. I've been testing them with products in my existing stash and kind of mixing it up. Some of these I really love. Some of these I'm a bit like on the fence about. I can't lie, we're pressing rewind here. I started to put <laughs> my foundation on before I put the primer on. Let's just, I just like patted it. Let's just, let's just ignore it. Back to the first product, first product. It's the Lila B Glow Priming Oil. Um, Lila B I've heard so much about because Alana always mentions them. She's obsessed with their bronzer, I think it is. And I feel like she might have even used this product. Um, a priming oil, I was like, <laughs> Yes, please. A moisturizing facial oil that balances and improves skin texture, leaving it perfectly primed for makeup application with a glowing and radiant finish. Oh my word, does this give glow? <laughs> like, are you ready for this? I feel like if you have even just 
slightly oily skin, you will probably hate this. It really does feel like a face oil. It gives so much slip to the skin, so much glow, and it really hangs around as well. Like whenever I use this, like later on in the day, I feel like my skin is still very juicy, very dewy. It's not like a dry downy type product. Like this is gonna leave your face, not sticky necessarily, but it's gonna have that kind of juicy wet finish all day. So if that's not something that you're into, this is 100% one to avoid. I actually like getting my flyaways with the leftovers. There you go, just like smoothing that down. Hopefully you can see that that really does give serious, serious glow. Um, I like this, but so many of the bases that I use already have that super dewy glowy finish. Um, so I feel like actually it is almost too glowy <laughs> when I pair it with those kinds of things. But with things in my collection, like the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, which definitely has more, it's still like a glowy finish on the skin, but kind of dries down a little bit more. This looks really nice underneath something like that. So if you have more matte products that you wanna give a glowy finish, that is perfect but I feel like if you've already got the glow in a lot of your makeup, this actually might be too much for you. But it's intrigued me into the brand. It has piqued my interest and I 100% want to try more things. I love their vibe. They have kind of the vibe that I'm into, packaging, the products they do, the shades they offer. I'm into it. Okay, now, <laughs> now we go back to the Ilia, the Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 30. It's high protection, niacinamide, squalene, and hyaluronic acid. So you're very much getting a skincare hit with this as well as like makeup. Although I would say this is a skin tint, like that needs to be in capital letters, skin tint. This is like Glossier skin tint levels of evening out, but base, I need to stop doing that, that's so annoying, sorry. It evens out, but in a very, 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 very light coverage, practically undetectable way. Um, if I put this on with my fingers, this is really nice, like working from home, just want to kind of have like something on my face to even things out, it works really nicely. But if I do wanna build a little bit more coverage with it, I take a couple of drops into like more of a buffing brush and I sort of more, buff this on my face and press it in. It's glowy as hell, which like I'm super into. Um, this is also available in a ton of shades, which is brilliant. Um, a lot more of these conscious kind of natural brands don't have the shade offering there yet, but this comes in a ton and I have it in the shade ST8 Shella. You can see that over that Lila B primer, it is like so, so glowy. Like there is no way that I need to use highlighter today. That is for sure. I think for me, I personally like this more in like a just put it on your fingers and like push it in all over your face because I do find that when I do this, again, it's almost too glowy. Like who, who am I? Can you believe that I'm even saying these things? One thing to note though, is it's definitely not glowy in terms of, it's just got like loads of mica and like shimmery particles in the formula. It actually is the texture of the formula that is giving that glow, which I'm personally really into. I hate when the glow is kind of superficial and it's more just because of what's inside instead of the actual texture of the product. So. I am glowing, kind of look a bit like I'm sweating. <laughs> to the point where when I use these both in conjunction, I basically go over and just press it in, almost to like blot it down. But if you are seriously, seriously dry, like this would be a glorious combination. But as I mentioned, I think this needs to be used with something that isn't as glowy over the top. And this I actually just like as kind of a barely there, take a couple of drops, push it into the skin, even everything out in a way that I would use Glossier Skin Tint. For concealer, I didn't actually make a new purchase because I already owned the RMS Beauty. This is the Uncover Up. I use it in the shade 11 and I love it. And look, I'm using it up, woo. I normally just press this in under my eyes and then I sometimes take a little bit on a brush. This is a Zoeva 114. Lux Face Focus. And I just take that around my nose where I've got a bit of redness going on. And I really like this concealer. Um, a lot of people ask how it compares to the Glossier Stretch, which I mean, that along with this concealer are my favorite concealers of like all time. I just absolutely adore them. Um, I would say the Glossier is a little bit sheerer, a little bit more dewy on the skin. So a bit of a lighter coverage. This has a touch more coverage, 
not a shed load. This is not like a blemish busting, oh my gosh, full coverage concealer at all. It's very much a light coverage. But because it has a little bit more than the Glossier, I would say this has a little bit more longevity to it. And it's not more noticeable on the skin, but if you were to compare the two, I feel like it would be slightly more noticeable than something like the Glossier Stretch. But I love them both. I have them both in my makeup box and I just, yeah. I adore them, I love them. Okay, so things are looking a little bit more evened out. I have quite severe redness around my nose at the moment, so this type of concealer really isn't going to completely dim that down. I sometimes just take a little tiny bit on my finger and like lightly press it in, but that's fine. I'm, I'm happy with that, it's skin, it's cool. One thing that I really struggled to find was a cream bronzer. There, there isn't a lot in the market that I could personally find. I have the, oh, how do you say this brand? Kaya Wise, Kaija Wise. I've used an eyeshadow from this brand before and really liked it. Super into the packaging. It's all like refillable, chic as hell, very much into it. And this was one of few cream bronzers I could find. There was a RMS Beauty one, but that looked a little bit too shimmery for me. Um, but I couldn't find something that was like the Chanel Tan de Soleil that I absolutely adore. Everything kind of looked quite sheer and had a lot of shimmer in it, which is personally like not, really not the bronzer vibe that I'm into. And this is kind of sheer and does have a lot of shimmer in it. Um, this is the bronzer in the shade Dazzling. There is a slightly deeper shade. This is their lighter one. And I personally like it best with the Zoeva 125 Stippling Brush. And I basically just lightly push that into my cheeks. Um, I don't like to apply bronzer with my fingers. It's just messy as hell. Like this is a much less messy version and I feel like you can properly like blend it out. I mean, that's given a nice amount of like sun kissedness to the cheeks, but it also comes with a hella load of shimmer, which I sort of don't really need or want, especially after the base combination that I've used. So I feel like this just adds like, again, a little bit too much shine. So I'm kind of not wild about this bronzer. I don't mind it, but it's not my favorite pick. The tone is nice, the shimmer, not so much. If anyone knows of a good cream bronzer that's a bit like the Chanel, I'm, I'm interested, I'm, I'm all is, I'm waiting. Okay, so I think we've already established that highlighter is not required. If I was to use a highlighter, I do really enjoy this one. It's the RMS Beauty, it's the Magic Luminizer. So the Luminizer was always like the best-selling thing, the Living Luminizer, I'm sure you've heard of it. I've had that for years. It's like up there in my travel stash somewhere, gathering dust. <laughs> But actually, I really do like the tone of the Magic one. Um, it's a bit more like a Glossier Halo Scope Quartz. Um, you can't really see it, which, which I think is brilliant. It works really well on my skin tone for that. And I think they've sort of bought out luminizers that feel more inclusive in terms of skin tone. So there's kind of something for everyone. I find the Living Luminizer a little bit too like purpley blue sometimes. And this feels a bit more champagne-y yellow with a bit of pink in. It works really nicely on my skin tone, but as I mentioned, they have ones that will work better on other skin tones as well. So super into that as a product. It's really nice. I've used the other version of it for years. Um, with brows, I just don't really do that much with my brows these days. I literally just give them a little brush. Cool, cool, we're done. Can't wait to see my brow girl, Claire, again. Claire, I miss you. <laughs> But I did buy, where has it gone? This from Manassi7. It's a brand that's created in Stockholm and it's very much like a mixing brand. You kind of buy different creamy balms and then you can mix them in with something like this. This is the Beauty Evolution All Over Shine Glossy Finish. So this is a balm you could use on your lips, on your brows, on your eyes, on your cheeks. You could mix it in. They do like a foundation, like paste almost. You could mix it in with that to make that quite dewy because I think that is quite a matte product. So it's like a little multitasking balm. And I have just been taking a tiny amount and like putting it through my brows and almost using it a bit as a brow gel. I don't think it does like much, but it kind of keeps them in place a little bit more than they would be if there was nothing in there and it just gives them like a nice groomed finish. Um, so I think that's like a nice product to have. It's a really interesting brand, this one. It feels a bit more makeup artistry lead and it's very heavily into sustainable packaging as well which is really cool i have some things a little bit further down the line to show you from them as well so brows we're kind of done here there is nothing to see then for eyes i have this from cosas cosas 
Cossas. It's their 10 second eyeshadow. This is in the shade Copper Halo. I actually had this already. This was a brand that I had tried before. I had this product already. You have to shake it very, very well. Um, it's called 10 second eyeshadow. And it's basically a liquid eyeshadow. They have it in some really cool colors actually. They have some more like neutrally shiny metallic taupes. They have a gold, but then they also have like a blue, a lilac. Um, I've gone for the, uh, yeah, the huge. I'm kind of on the fence about this product. I don't really know how <laughs> to feel about this product. I love a like cream eyeshadow. Normally I love a liquid eyeshadow because they tend to basically just be like a cream format, but in a dough for applicator. But this is very much a liquid eyeshadow. Like, I don't know if you can see. Basically, if I go like this, you can see all the liquid moving around. It's like water. And I just find it a little bit tricky to apply. Um, and I find that sometimes the color and then the shimmer, cause all of the colors are very, very shimmery, which again, like isn't really my vibe currently. I find that the pigment and then the shimmer pigment kind of separate on the eye. And yeah, it's, it's just not my fave formula, but I will give you a demonstration today and like show you how I kind of work around it. Um, I don't use any primer with it because it is so liquidy then you just end up with like a primary eyeshadowy goop on your eye. So I don't do that. I just try to wipe any excess off my eye and then I paint this all over the lid. Whoa! And then it's kind of more of like a dabbing motion with my brush. I'm using my like usual Zoeva here. I'll link it down below for you. It dries super quick. So I just think you need to be quite speedy. It's definitely a one eye at a time situation here. And once I've done that more like placing of the eyeshadow, I take a clean brush and do more of like a blend. Always the way you kind of dump on a product and then it looks really nice. <laughs> oh, it looks really nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do the other side and then we'll chat. One thing I do like about this formula is that I do find it to be very long lasting. And that is the thing with these more liquidy eyeshadows. Like once they dry down, they dry down and they do not move, which is great for someone like me whose eyelids literally eat up eyeshadow for breakfast, which is great. This lasts really, really well. I just, I find it a little bit difficult to use. Like there's something like the Giorgio Armani eye tint and I can just slap that on and basically like do it in my sleep. Whereas I feel like this, I'm needing to use two brushes. I mean, hopefully you might've seen a little bit more with this eye. I felt like it was separating a little bit more. It definitely wasn't as easy to use as on this eye. So it's not a product that I hate and like wouldn't use or wouldn't recommend. It just just requires a little bit of patience and it does give that gloss look to the eyes which I am into like I wouldn't want to use an eye gloss over this because because of that shimmer you're basically getting that eye gloss look anyway so there you go what can I say damn it show, show me up <laughs> oh look it matches my like super bad fake tanny wrist one thing that I really, really struggled to find was a waterproof mascara. And this is basically the only one that is available in that kind of conscious beauty space. And it is a Air Perez, Air, Air Perez. I'll link it down below for you. It is their avocado waterproof mascara. So I tested this out for like a solid week. And I would say that it really doesn't smudge too much. So it really holds up to its waterproof mascara claims, which I think is nice. It is just a very, it's like a, like a cute mascara. You get very minimal amounts of volume. It's quite dry, which I don't mind. I quite like a dry formula. Um, so it means you, you really get a nice kind of cute, fluffy, absolutely no way you could ever make this clumpy kind of lash. My mom would love this mascara. It's a very good like everyday, just want a little bit of like, hello, I have eyelashes rather than volume or anything like that. It reminds me a lot of Glossier Lash Slick, but it actually holds a curl on me. So that's fun. So for lips, there are countless options. There was so many, I've literally got five different options here. And um, the first ones are from Vapor Beauty and this is their Lip Nectar in Chill. Um, I just thought this was kind of a Glossier cake style, like nude lip balm. And I also picked up the shade Tempt. Um, which is more of like a rosy, your lips but better pink sort of shade. I really, really like these lip balms actually. They smell, I do not like the smell. It really reminds me of something like Glitter Babes makeup or something. Like I'm not into the scent at all. Um, and I actually find the formula to be really like the Glossier Generation G's in that it's a little bit waxy. It's like you have to 
work for it. It's actually quite a matte finish on the lips um, for something that's a balm. It's not like super, super shiny, but personally, I quite like that. And then I also did pick up some more things from this Manassi 7 brand. These are their Beauty Evolution All Over Color Creamy Finish. And I've got three different ones here. Whoa. So as I mentioned, these are their like creamy balms that you can use on your eyes, lips, face, like wherever you want. You could mix them in with that super shiny balm if you wanted to, to make them like really shiny. Um, I just kind of picked the wrong shades of these. I really struggled to like work out what shades they actually were and there's not a lot of swatches that exist online so i'll just like quickly swatch them now for you this is oh my gosh a truce can it's like a sheer sort of watermelon -y pink densuk is like a milky peach sort of shade so i was like oh a peachy pink and then i was like oh that's like way too kind of white and creamy for me and then this is the shade chamoisy chamoisy and this one, I was like, oh, this be like a good bronzer for me. But as you can see, it's more of like a tawny pink. So I sort of bought these as like, oh, maybe I can use them on my eyes. Maybe I can use them on my lips. Maybe this is a bronzer, but they sort of weren't the right shades for me. I'm sure I will find a use for them, but it made me want to go into store and, and swatch the whole lineup because there were loads of different shades because I feel like there would be shades that would be more suited to what I would want to use these sorts of textures for. Um, I think they have them in person at Content Wellbeing. So when that all reopens and, you know, next year <laughs> I would love to test them out um, but I think today I'm actually going to use the Vapor Beauty this is the shade Tempt so this is like the pinkier shade um, I found chill a little bit too nude maybe I'll put a little bit of chill over the top as well nude it down a little bit ah yeah yeah, this one really does remind me of Glossier Cake. So this is the finished look. I feel like out of all of these things that I have here, I do have some favorites. I think the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 30 is a glorious product. Um, I feel like I forgot to mention that bit actually. I would never use enough for it to be SPF 30 on my skin. So I'm kind of like ignoring the SPF factor in it, but I do love the skin evening out super juicy into that. I feel like it's just a tad too juicy with the Lila B underneath, but I really do love that product. Also the RMS Beauty Uncover Up in 11, like it's a glorious, glorious concealer. If you love a cream concealer, if you love something that is really emollient on the skin, like I now struggle to use any sort of like doe foot applicator, high coverage concealers, because I feel like they just instantly make me look like a cake face. And then also I'm really into these lip balms. Like they're just a nice lip balm that doesn't feel too like shiny on the lips, which I'm like really not into. Um, they're very, very similar to the Glossier Generation Gs that I really like. Um, so I feel like other things in here were a good experiment and things that might be right for you, but perhaps weren't my fave and I prefer the things I've already got in my routine already. But I will link all of these things down below for you and hopefully you've enjoyed this like new beauty adventure with these things. Like it was, it was really exciting to like find some new brands. So let me know if there is anything else you would like me to try. Let me know if you've given any of these things a go and you're also a fan. And yeah, I'll see you soon for a brand new video. Bye. Oh, thanks for watching. I hope you're all doing well. Miss you, bye. <laughs>